1980s was a totally awesome decade for hair metal, for Degrassi Junior High, and for blaming all of your problems on supernatural forces. You foul, rotten, sneaking devil, I'm gonna beat you up, you devil, I'm gonna cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus! The Gipper welcomed televangelists into the White House, the First Lady consulted an astrologer to determine the fate of the free world, and McGill-trained psychiatrist Lawrence Pazder used his impeccable academic credentials to ignite a satanic panic that blazed across the continent with predictably hellish consequences. Pazder shot to worldwide fame as the co-author of the best-selling book Michelle Remembers. The supposed memoir recounts Pazder's therapy sessions with his patient and eventual wife, Michelle Smith. After a half hour of primal screaming, she recalled partaking in acts of animal sacrifice, sexual abuse, the dismemberment of children, and then she met Satan himself. Being the finely trained mental health professional that he was, Dr. Pazder found Michelle Smith's story completely plausible. In his measured professional judgment, Michelle Smith was not an attention-seeking crackpot, but rather the courageous victim of a massive international conspiracy known as the Church of Satan! No surprise the tabloids were all over Michelle Remembers. But it was Oprah, how can a television talk show host possibly be this gullible Winfrey in full New Age mode who mainstreamed Dr. Pazder's fringy fairy tale into a multinational moral panic. My next guest was used also in worshiping the devil, participated in human sacrifice rituals, rituals and cannibalism. By decades end, an unholy trinity of police, pastors and politicians saw the devil's hand behind every deed. The practice of evil in the devil's name, it exists and it's flourishing. It deals with the sexual abuse of children by satanic cults. The apparent practice of Satanism. There are thousands of men and women who are secretly worshipping the devil, a devil in this country. Heavy metal, Dungeons and Dragons, the Smurfs, oh, no. of course video games, were all obviously part of Satan's playground. From hard rockers to holy rollers, we all went a little cuckoo for Beelzebub. <laughs> And the whole time, while an international pedophilia conspiracy was actually verifiably being perpetrated by the Catholic Church, the world chose to ignore the real crime and instead perform a fake theological soap opera that took place entirely inside of Lawrence Pazder's deranged imagination. The satanic panic was easy to mock until criminal allegations of demonic forces began to spread across the continent. Lawrence Pazder poured gasoline on the hellfire. He testified at trials and claimed to have consulted with law enforcement on over a thousand cases of ritual satanic abuse. And he cornered the market in this field of expertise because it was a syndrome that he invented. And in what may become one of the biggest child molesting cases ever on record, seven nursery school teachers were arraigned today on more than 100 counts of child molestation. At the McMartin Preschool near Los Angeles, seven teachers were accused of kidnapping children, forcing them into group sex, animal sacrifice, and occult rituals. During the trial, Lawrence Pazder met with parents, therapists, and prosecutors to promote his theory that hundreds of preschoolers had been abused by members of an organized, nationwide satanic conspiracy. They're a secret organization, they're a secret society. Uh, a secret society does not reveal the identity of the people or the ways of their practices. I was familiar with this type of society firsthand in Africa, practicing general medicine there. And if one of the members of that society revealed who he was, he was killed instantly. Anyone, he said, could be part of the satanic conspiracy. Teachers, neighbors, your local policemen, and I kid you not, the entire California Angels baseball team was at one point under suspicion. How is this QAnon-level bullshit taken seriously in a court of law? Convinced of Pazder's satanic abuse theory, social workers used dodgy interrogation methods to pressure children into making false allegations against their teachers. Using puppets to encourage the children to reveal what happened, the therapists were able to unlock the horrible secrets of the McMartin School. At trial, 41 children testified to stories of abuse that were absolutely bonkers. Some children claimed they were flushed down toilets. Others said they saw witches fly. 
when showed photographs by a defense lawyer, one child identified actor Chuck Norris as a satanic abuser. Vous avez le droit de garder le silence. All right, we are ready for the jury. While the news media fell for Pazder's alternative facts, the jury, to their immense credit, didn't buy it. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the very defendants not guilty. Yeah. The longest and most expensive criminal trial held in this country came to an end today. After seven years, it resulted in no convictions, but it ruined the reputations of those falsely accused. It took years, and in some cases decades, but most of the satanic panic convictions were reversed. We're going to defeat the devil. Amen? By the late 1990s, the fever subsided, and we stopped making shit up about the devil. But more importantly, the Degrassi classic era came to an end as the public craved more sophisticated teen fare like Saved by the Bell. But I digress about Degrassi. The public eventually forgot about the satanic panic, but Lawrence Pazder never gave it up. The co-author of Meshuggah Remembers stood by his fire and brimstone Bubba Mises until the devil took his immortal soul in 2004. Which, by the way, is only two years before his evil twin would ascend to the highest office in the land. Creepy coincidence or an act of satanic Canadian abuse? You, you be, be the, the judge. judge.